So the Iranians, through their foreign minister, have asked uh, for $10 billion not to uh, re-sign the nuclear deal, but to get back into discussions with the United States directly. The Iranians know exactly how to play this. They've done this before. They've done it over the last decade. No discussions of substance without cash. Then comes the cash, and then comes no substantive discussions that really mean anything. The United States remains committed to preventing, to preventing Iran from gaining a nuclear weapon. We are working with the P5 plus one to engage Iran diplomatically and to seek a return to JCPOA. We're prepared to return to full compliance if Iran does the same. What do you mean we'll go back to full compliance? You mean we're just going to keep giving money to Iran? Because we never got the access we want. We never got the compliance. We never got the access. We were, we were not able to send the inspectors where they wanted to go. So he's pledging to the world that we will go into compliance. That's because the Trump administration left in 2019 and said, you know what, we're not going to be a part of this phony deal. Is there anyone seriously thinking that Vice President Biden is not so desperate to get back to the table and so desperate to get back into the so-called Iranian nuclear deal that he's not going to release their $10 billion and they're going to say, as Jordan, you said perfectly correctly, that it's not like we're giving them any money. It's their money. We're just not freezing it anymore as a confidence building measure. That's what they're going to say. The danger, of course, is what this means for the region, not just today, but a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. The United States would like to get back to the room. So it, uh, you know, it needs ticket, and the ticket is to be able to respond to the request of all P4 plus one, including Iran. There are important issues. One is removing all sanctions imposed, reimposed or relabeled or uh, newly labeled by, by Trump, and also to give a proper guarantee that uh, there would be nobody in Washington again to uh, violate the deal. It's how it worked in the Obama administration. It's how it works in the Biden administration. You've got an enemy of the United States. It doesn't matter if it's Iran or the Taliban. They are desperate to make a deal with the United States. And Jordan, the United States should hold all the leverage. They should hold all the cards. It should be the Taliban or it should be the Iranians who actually have to show good faith to come to the negotiating table. And yet you get them saying it's the United States that has to come to the table with the ticket. Even the German government rejects uh, this overture by the Iranians. But yet, the Biden administration appears not to be able to help itself in its willingness to surrender. And the Iranians were violating the deal before the deal was even put into force. I mean, in fact, when the United States pulled out, the European countries were still in. So this wasn't a situation where, you know, the United States was out and the deal was dead. And, and everybody knows that they were violating it, that the Iranians flaunted that they were violating it. So why would the United States be saying, we want $10 million, uh, we'll, give you, we'll release $10 billion to get you back to the table. Why aren't the Iranians just saying, we're glad to get back to the table? Because they have no intent to do anything differently than they're already doing. And the, the world is kidding itself if it thinks this is anything but that. And we're putting the entire region back in a jeopardy. For months, there were all these... Uh, Biden administration officials that would go on TV, like the Jake Sullivan types, talk about Iran. Iran knows they've gotten to them, gotten them to the table before, but this time around, they waited, they waited, they waited. They came up with a number. The number uh, is not so outrageous that you you can't dismiss something like this. This could easily move forward, and you can see an administration that's talking spending in the trillions how $10 billion to get back to the table with their friends from Iran uh, is not so extreme. The people that, that initially you know, negotiated for the Iran nuclear deal have been promoted. They're in higher positions of authority now in the Biden administration, and they're continuing the same song and dance, even though it's not realistic. You know, Iran will not live up to their, to their obligations in the agreement. They didn't do that before. Even now, they're way out of line with uh, the, the restrictions of that agreement. They're enriching uranium at 60, 70 percent, 90 percent is all they need for a nuclear weapon. Jake Sullivan uh, was, was driving the train on this the last time along, around, along with Wendy Sherman. What did they do then? They gave them the money. Jordan, I think everybody in Washington, D.C. Thinks, thinks that the same players on essentially the same team are going to do the same thing. But, you know, it's so much is retreaded from the Obama years. 
that it can sound like we're replaying an old show. But it's not an old show. It's 2021, and it's the same actors. They're back in charge now, and they're, they are, I'm sure, very happy that Iran said it's already a done deal to get back into negotiations, not that we'll sign the deal. So it seems like that $10 billion has already been green-lighted.